And we're hearing from many people on both sides of the political aisle tonight about President Biden dropping out of the race. Just days after calling for unity at the Republican convention, former President Donald Trump said this on his social media site, Truth Social, saying crooked Joe Biden was not fit to run for president and is certainly not fit to serve and never was. On Saturday, the former president was in the battleground state of Michigan holding his first campaign rally since the assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania. Last week, I took a bullet for democracy. The latest ABC News poll showed former President Trump's favorability rating went up after last week's assassination attempt. 40% of Americans have a favorable view of the former president, which is the highest rating in four years, while just 32% view President Biden favorably. So that number is about the same to where it was one year ago when it was 33%. The poll also found 61% of Americans thought President Biden should end his bid for reelection. We heard from Democrats here in the tri-state about the president's decision. Let's bring in WCPO 9 News reporter Andrew Rowan. Now, Andrew, you spoke with many of them. They all seem to have a pretty common theme here. Yeah, they're calling President Biden's decision patriotic, Brett, saying with this decision to withdraw from the race, he puts his country before himself. Surprise, I will share that with you. Tri-state Democrats are reacting to the biggest shakeup to a presidential race in decades. This is a decision made out of his servant's heart for the betterment of the country at this time. Kentucky State Representative Rachel Roberts thanking President Biden. Now, I want the focus today to be on this moment of gratitude for a life of service that has been you know, given to all of us in the United States. Ohio Representative Greg Landsman calling Biden's decision patriotic. We just need to move past this moment. He spoke with WCPO 9's Valerie Lyons on Friday, just hours after joining the growing list of Democrats calling for the president to drop out. It's to ensure that we can strengthen our democracy, restore freedom, build an economy that works for working people, it, tackle gun violence in, in a real way, uh, and a whole host of other things that require really measured, thoughtful, decent and pragmatic leadership. Hamilton County Democrats are fired up and ready to go to win this election. Hamilton County Democratic Party Chair Gwen McFarland supports Biden's endorsement of Vice President Harris. Are there any concerns about uh, down ballot races with the new ticket? Always, you know, but we don't worry about that because we're educating our people. We're reminding them how important it is to vote the total ballot. But the names at the top of that ballot are still undecided. If anyone else is going to emerge, they're going to have to emerge quickly and start collecting those signatures. Experts say the Democratic Party is now walking a fine line ahead of their convention. I think there will be questions if they don't open it up. But I think there is also questions if they don't support Vice President Harris. It's a quick turnaround to get someone who's ready to be on the national level to run a national campaign with virtually no existing infrastructure. I'm hearing from a lot of Democrats who are saying this is a day to honor President Joe Biden and his lifetime of service to the country. But come tomorrow, the Democrats have their work cut out for them. Brett, the clock is ticking for the party to name a new ticket. Andrew Rowan in studio tonight, thank you for that. So as the Democrats nominate a new candidate for president, former President Donald Trump and his running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, continue the camp on the campaign trail. So WCPO 9 News reporter Sam Hirosimowicz is here now. So Sam, you went to Vance's hometown of Middletown where he's going to be making his appearance for the first time as a vice presidential pick. We sure did, Brett, and the entire campaign trail will have a major shakeup leading to next month's Democratic National Convention. But on the Republican side, it seems to be full steam ahead with Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, taking a visit to his alma mater tomorrow. Voters in Middletown finding out about President Joe Biden taking his name out of the race. I was a little surprised because there was a pretty big supporting of him, I guess. I think it definitely shows uh, humility and grace. One Middletown, Ohio voter telling me he's a dedicated Democrat. With Sunday's news, he says he hopes to see the current vice president take over the Oval Office. I'm a team Kamala. Yeah, I'm definitely team Kamala Harris all the way. Another Middletown resident says he leans conservative and he is happy to see local J.D. Vance leading the way for Republicans. I'm more on the conservative standpoint. It's pretty cool that somebody from Middletown is going that high up in office. Republican State Senator Adam Matthews telling me today's decision by President Biden didn't shock him. I was hoping that 
uh, President Biden would realize that he was not up to the task. Another local Republican leader says he hopes this move by their opposition will sway moderate voters. And I just think the American public, independent swing voters, um, I mean, again, they, they felt the crunch in their pocketbooks and they've seen the crime in the streets and they're ready for change. Voters who are not sure of who they'll be choosing this November now will be waiting to see who Donald Trump's opponent will be. Vance's rally is set to kick off at 1.30 Monday afternoon at Middletown High School. Expect complete coverage from WCPO 9 News tomorrow. In studio, Sam Harrisonwitz, WCPO 9 News. All right, Sam, thank you for that. And despite President Biden's endorsement, it's not a sure thing Vice President Harris will become the Democratic nominee. And we also don't know if the party will look for another candidate. So that could come during a virtual roll call, which is tentatively planned for early August. That's because there's concern about the deadline to get on the Ohio ballot. So it could also come at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, which starts August 19th, where delegates will select a new candidate to be the party's nominee. So as for challengers, we know independent Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia is considering a run for the White House. Sources say Manchin is considering re-registering as a Democrat to run against Vice President Harris. The president said he will address the nation later this week. He's currently at his home in Delaware recovering from COVID. We're going to keep you updated on the latest from the president's camp as we get answers to many of the questions now looming about this election. And as Sam mentioned, we're going to have team coverage tomorrow as Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance holds a rally in his hometown.